Good morning all. <laughs> Actually no, it's 20 past 12. Good afternoon all. Today I want to do the final assembly of the first of my three PWM5 solar charge controllers, which are going on those three big 12 volt batteries outside. This one is uh, almost complete. I just need to fit the final component, which is a transient suppression diode. It fits, uh, oh, let's zoom right in. It fits in these two holes here, and it sits physically above the tab of the MOSFET. I'm talking waiting for the focus tab, and there it is. And it, so it goes in these two holes here. It sits above the MOSFET. Now, one end of it is connected to V-Solar, which goes to the drain of the MOSFET, which, of course, is also connected to the tab. So if the MOSFET sort of slid over this way and touched onto this connection, wouldn't be a problem. If the MOSFET slides over that way and touches onto that connection, which I think is ground, yes, it would be a major problem because it was short, basically, um, positive solar panel to ground, which would be really bad. And that brings up another issue. I meant to put a little piece of um, insulation tape under the MOSFET because under it, here's the, here are the two tracks that run underneath the body of the MOSFET. And uh, once again, this one drain doesn't matter if it touches the metalwork on the back of the MOSFET, the tab in other words. But this one, which is uh, VBAT, so that's the red wire, that's a positive battery. It would be a problem if that connection were to touch the metalwork on the back of the MOSFET body. Now, when I laid this board out, I thought, OK, I'll run that sort of out to the side because I kind of was thinking, well, this is the plastic bit and then the metal bit sticks up here. But it doesn't quite work like that because the metal tab runs down into the plastic body and is exposed down here. So there is going to be just a little corner here where the metalwork of the tab is sitting directly on top of a connection that it has nothing to do with. And so the only thing insulating the tab of the MOSFET from that uh, connection track is the solder resist coating is that good enough it probably is if i don't scratch it but it's quite thin now once the transient suppression diode is soldered in and it's in place you can see actually this mosfet is slightly biased this way which is probably a good thing um, and i start putting the uv glue conformal coating on well of course that'll glue everything into place so the uh, mosfet's not going to move it's not going to make contact with that connection Right, let me get a transient suppression diode and solder it in. Here's one, it's the P6KE33CA. Now the CA type is bidirectional, so there's actually no cathode marking on here because it doesn't have a cathode. In fact, I think it has two anodes because it's effectively two diodes, kind of Zener diodes, pointing at each other so that it can conduct once you've overcome the Zener voltage in either direction. And these things are just used to take out um, high voltage but very short duration spikes. So if anything like that came through on these solar panel wires, I mean these could be several meters long going from the charge controller up to the solar panel. If you get a little spike, this thing will just clamp it down. And this thing can dissipate 600 watts, I think it is, um, for a very short duration. Uh, obviously not for any length of time, 600 watts would cook this component. Let's solder it in. Well, I just went and bent it with really very little regard for its positioning. So I think I'm going to bend it and put some slightly tighter radiuses on it because I can't have it coming down and touching the edge of the MOSFET. Yeah, that was a bit silly, really. Anyway, there are some uh, slightly tighter radiuses. Let's try that. Yes, that's looking good. So let's bring that down so that it's touching the tab. Um, it's slightly asymmetric in that that side droops down a bit, but actually that's the best side to droop down because that's the side that is connected to the tab. This side needs to stay up and away from that tab because they're not the same connection. Ready to solder that component in place. Now, if you're thinking Julian Eilert, Little uh, surname pronunciation hint there. What's that horrible red wire running through the middle of the two black wires there? Well, that's because um, the way the positive and negative on my batteries are laid out, I need red on this side and black on this side so that the LED on the other side is facing 
towards me when I'm looking at the battery. Uh, just go with it. It's a thing. Uh, so I've had to route that through there. Now, had I connected that red wire to the MOSFET leg directly, it would have been this leg here, it would have come out um, in the position I want it. But I didn't. I cut the legs off the MOSFET and soldered it onto the pad on the board. So still, at least um, you get the option of uh, which side to put the red, depending on whether you put it in the pad and run it down this side or on the MOSFET leg and running it down that side. Yeah, it's an option. All right, let's try and solder these. Um, one of these is ground, isn't it? Uh, that one, oh, well, at least that one's easier to get to angle-wise. But that's going to take a lot of heat to get the solder to flow on the one that is spoked into the ground plane. Always have trouble with these. Not too bad. Now, this one should be easier. It's between, I'm not blocking the view, am I, with my head? It's between these two wires, so I am in danger of melting things. Right, I think that's soldered in. I want to do my PCBs in a default colour other than green, really, because green PCBs on a green mat don't show up terribly well. I suppose the other thing I could do is change the green mat, but I've had the green mat since day one. Is that my cuttings bot? pot? No, that's my cuttings pot. So yeah, dilemma, not sure. Anyway, that's the final component in place, the transient suppression diode. I think that looks rather good sitting across the tab of the MOSFET, holding it down on the board. Let's have a close up. And today's JLC PCB close up magnifying glass is passionate. That's quite, I like quite like the widescreen thing, but it just doesn't focus very close. But anyway, there it is, there's the transorb sitting across the uh, MOSFET tab. Mm. Now I don't think I'm going to change the code in the microcontroller here. Let's use pliers for this. So I'm going to remove this programming header now and in any case I think as many of you said um, I can always, well assuming these holes are empty, I can always just put a header in and just hold it in there tightly while I reprogram it. The reprogramming only takes a few seconds. Oh, these pins are bending back. I don't suppose that's a major issue, is it? Oh yes, this is not very elegant at all really, is it? But it is coming off. <laughs> that's the plastic off. Now let's get these pins out by heating these up one by one and hoping they just fall out. I just have to bang it. Yeah, that's worked. Yeah, they're dropping out like a good one. Three, four, five. They're all out. So the next part is to uh, conformally coat this and also glue things into position. So I want to glue these two wires at the end there. I want to make sure glue gets in uh, by the side of the MOSFET tab and that connection which it mustn't touch. So I'll glue that. But generally speaking, I just want to glue the whole thing to seal it in so that it's uh, weatherproof. Now I have three of these uh, glue gun things, but I haven't used them for a long time and I've no idea, I don't think it's runny enough to hear it. No, I've no idea whether these have uh, gone all hard or whether there's any glue left or whatever. Well, we'll soon find out. If um, none of them are any good, well, that's the end of this video, really. First things first, I'm going to use my old cutting mat just in case any of the glue spills. Let's lift up these items. Oh, it didn't bring its... Oh, I'll do that off camera. So to get the uh, wires into the positions I want them, I'll bed them down into some blue tack. That should do. And then I'll just start, I just want that a little bit flatter to the board really. Uh, just start applying this UV glue. See if it's still alive. Yeah, it's not coming out. And that one still had its cap on, so I'm not sure I've ever used that one. 
Okay, let's try another one. I might be able to shove a pin up in the end of the hole or something. If it doesn't float. Oh, this one's got its cap on. Maybe I'll put the caps back on. Let's try that one. Oh yeah, someone's coming out. Look at that. Quite viscous. But that has glued those two wires into position. Let's just run a bit on the other side of the red. On the other side of the black. And then I could um, UV that and make it go hard. Where's my UV torch? So while I do that, let's get the UV torch on. I'll just press down on that red white. Oh no, that's not working terribly well. I'm going to have to draw that. Oh no, it's all not working in three dimensions, but let's see if I can cure that. Mindful, of course, that I'm um, ultravioleting my fingers. I'm not sure whether this is a safe UV. What does that say? S2 plus. Don't know what that means. Let's see if that's gone hard. Yeah, that looks like it's set pretty well. They seem to be anchored down, which is good because that's about the position I wanted. Uh, so these can come in at sort of that angle. That should be fine. Let's get those, a little bit of glue around those, and then I'll start working on the top. I've just been wondering whether layering this glue, so doing one layer and then coming back and doing another layer, whether that's any less good a, an idea than doing the whole thing in one go. It'd be a lot easier if I could just layer it, because then I can build it up. So the on the little um, PWM5 Femto that I had outside, in fact it's still out there, it had started to corrode on the high points and uh, had I been able to layer the glue and build up higher coverings, that wouldn't have happened. So I'm certainly going to try the idea of layering it. Oh, have I got enough glue for all of this? Right, I'm going to go over the programming header now, so I'm not going to be able to use that again it's going to be all glued up but yeah those wires are all pretty much glued in place just do a bit more on the yellow wire it's going to go into the mounting hole okay uv light let's set that certainly this um uv glue doesn't go off these tubes seem to be um fairly light resistant so i was worried that they might have all gone hard since I last used them, which I don't know, was that a year ago? So I want to make sure that the glue is totally hard, or at least non-liquid, on this bottom side, because when I flip it over I don't really want this thing gluing itself to my mat. So I'll give this a good UVing all around the glue areas. I'm just going to try poking a, a 1N4148 diode down the end of this glue nozzle to see whether I can get it working again. It doesn't have to be a 1N4148, it could be any signal diode. Um, yes. Let's see if that one... Oh yeah, that one started working. Great! So let's glue in and around the area between the transient suppression diode and the MOSFET tab. And generally speaking, just glue that MOSFET down onto the board. We'll do some nice uh, close-up gluing shots now, I think. So let's glue along that back edge of the MOSFET. So I can take my time on this. I don't have to rush, do I? I mean, I would if this was uh, production. I'd have to work out some sort of high-speed production technique. But when you're only making a one-off, well, three-off in my case, high-speed production techniques, not necessary all down that end. Now that's that 10k resistor, that's not going to be able to be changed, but it seemed to work all right. Well, I want to do a video on that 10k resistor, perhaps I'll do that on the next board I make. Um, to show the effect that has on electromagnetic interference, or the generation of RF, and how effective it is at removing that, because it really is. So that's something I want to do coming up. Let's start getting in around the microcontroller and the LED. 
getting around all these legs. Yes, of course, on the Femto, the little tiny PWM5, it required far less glue. I've only got these three tubes, so am I going to run out of glue doing this? That's a thought, because it is taking quite a bit of UV glue. Oh well, let's just carry on and see how far we get. Cover those three diodes that are part of the, uh, what's it called, voltage multiplier thing. The charge pump, that's it. Let's go over the programming header now. I suppose I ought to get some UV on this now and start making some of this stuff set. Now if I go through the hole, is that a problem? Is it going to drip through onto my mat? No, it doesn't seem to be. Areas that will need additional glue built up on top of the chip pins because the chip's sitting quite high because it's sat over the LED resistor. On top of the MOSFET pins because they're quite high. And the legs of the transorb are quite high up. So a little bit more glue on them. Right, let's get the UV on that and then I can think about another layer or another coat. Yes, I'd quite like to get the MC4 connectors on black and yellow today. I'm not going to put a diode in there because the main reason for having a diode is so that you don't accidentally short black and yellow with power on this side. Well, that's not going to happen with MC4s because the MC4s are on there <laughs> unless you're stupid enough to plug them into each other. Um, they're not going to short out because the, the metalwork is recessed into the plastic. So that's not going to happen. So I'm not going to bother with the diode. And the diode, of course, does uh, introduce a, a voltage drop. And the diode gets quite hot, so it does have a fair amount of dissipation, which is why I keep it external to the unit. Don't I didn't try and put it on the board because it does get much hotter than the MOSFET. MOSFET just gets mildly warm, whereas the the external shocky diode, and I'm not talking about the transorb diode, that doesn't do anything really. The external shocky, which I used to put in the, the yellow wire. Uh, and in some ways it's quite useful because you can just put your finger on it and get a sense for how much current is flowing through it by how hot it is. So you could almost measure the current from the temperature. Bit of a spillage here, I think glue ran through the holes, came down on the underside. Well, if I set that off now there's a little spike sticking out of that um, black wire I'll try and break that off in a moment I might as well set this as well and then I can peel it off the mat yeah so a little bit of spillage as it ran through the holes in the board and now although this looks liquid oh it's sort of semi-liquid but yeah uh, semi-liquid, semi-solid. I'll give that some more UV. I didn't give that much, did I? Let's get that completely solid and then I can peel it off the mat. That seems to have solidified a bit more. But at the same time, it seems to have bonded to the mat quite well. It's actually proving a bit more tricky to unbond to the mat. Oh well. It's coming off. It is a cutting mat after all. Well, since I've still got some glue left, I think I am going to have a second uh, coat. And I'm going to sort of go over the top of the MOSFET here in order to build up some height. And over the transorb again, over the top of it, to try and ensure that its legs are completely coated in glue so that they can't corrode because that's what happened on the femto board the legs of the transient suppression diode corroded yeah this is quite good i can build up a glue layer over the top of the mosfet down over its legs again make sure that's completely entombed in the stuff Right, final thing is just to cover all the metal work, these exposed pins on the reverse of the board, and then I'm finished with the gluing. So let's just get a thin layer on the back of the board here, make sure all my solder joints are covered, 
and then I think I'm ready to take this thing outside. Well, ready to put the connectors on. I'm just wondering whether it makes sense to run a sliver of glue actually along the outer edges of the board because they're still exposed. Um, I think some people were talking about moisture getting in between the layers of the fiberglass. Not that there are layers, there's just one layer really. But I mean, there's nothing to stop me just running a bead of glue along this edge. So yeah, I might as well do it. And uh, then it is completely sealed in on uh, in all three dimensions. So what's another good source of UV? Well, the sun, of course. So I shall leave it out here baking in the sun for a while just to cook it. Uh, this is, of course, where it's going onto those solar panels. I'll make two more of them. Uh, for the three Trojan batteries, which have got their sun shades on at the moment. And the Femto is down here, if you can see it. There it is, with its blue LED. That looks like it's on all the time at the moment, because of course it's um, modulating. And the battery that it's driving, which is this big one here, <laughs> starting to be a bit um, amalgamated into this bush here. That's fully charged, so um, the blue light on the Femto is on all the time. Shows that it's up to voltage. I think I'll take this uh, mat outside because it's got a bit covered in UV glue. So if I take that out and put it in the sun, this is my old cutting mat, uh, these little drips can harden up. So while that charge controller uh, cooks in the sun, or the UV glue goes hard in the sun. I'm thinking about connectors. Now one end, of course I've got a pair of MC4s. So these things will go on yellow and black. I've got to try and remember which way around those go. And then at the other end, I'm going to need some of these. So I need the 8mm hole but I don't want the thickest of them. I've got a feeling I want this one, which is the eight, but with the slightly smaller end. Now that's not small by any standards in relation to the wire thickness, but I have to do my best to solder it on. It's very important that I remember all the things that have to go onto these wires. So heat shrink for the black and red, which are gonna have these little uh, six dash eight terminals put on them. I found these slightly smaller ones it's a smaller uh, crimp end. If that is a crimp end, I don't know. It might just be a solder end. Uh, but a very large diameter bolt hole because the batteries have 8mm M8 threads. Uh, this stuff has to go on yellow and black. Um, I don't think anything else has to go on those. No, so I'll just cut a couple of lengths of this. I'll make them uh, 5 centimeters like that. I was just wondering, actually, whether I might try crimping these with this crimp tool. If I use the largest hole, that might work. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll just solder them, or I might solder them as well. And then I've got to crimp the MC4s, but they go on the yellow and black side. I think I'll start with these. Let's go for about 7mm of strip back to go into those. I've got my heat shrinks up there, so I don't forget. So 7mm black. Is that one still on seven? Yeah, I think so. Seven mil red. And yeah, let's give them a go at crimping. So this one's marked 10. 10 watt, I don't know. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to... I might be able to apply enough force on that. Okay, so I want the wire, because I want this to face forward. So I want the wire to come in this way round effectively. So let's try the black, holding that in the right orientation. And, oh yeah, it's pretty tough. So I think I'll have to push down on the bench. <coughs> yeah, that's not gonna be easy. And that wire is in danger of slipping out just at the moment where it crimps. Here we go. Yeah. Did that make a successful, <laughs> no. It didn't, right, I'm gonna have to solder that. Yeah, it just sort of created a, a U shape, a smiley shape there. 
but it didn't actually grip the wire. But anyway, there's less uh, volume in there now to fill it with solder. So yes, yeah, soldering it is. This will be a good test of the TS100 soldering iron. Can I get this tag hot enough? There's not a lot of contact surface area between the ring and the crop clip there. But can I get it hot enough to feed solder? I'm thinking of feeding it down that little hole there. So let's give it a try. But it's just going to be a question of getting the whole thing hot enough. And I'm in danger of letting the solder run down the tag onto the bolt area, which I don't really want to do. Just want to get to run down that hole. Ah, okay, I think it's hot enough now, but is it running down that hole? Yeah, I think it is now. So I'll feed it in in the hope that it'll fill up this cavity and I'll see it appear at the other end here. Oh, it is running down into the area that's going to be bolted, which is a nuisance. Okay, I think I'm going to have to feed it in from this end, which is much more difficult. Now it is going in. And from there. Well, that's probably enough. Let's let it cool down now. Well, there are my black and red connectors on the uh, battery side. Now I need to do the MC4 connectors on the, oops, I'm going to short that lot out, uh, on the solar side. I've checked the solar panel outside. Uh, positive is definitely on the plastic male, plastic male. So negative, I folded the negative wire back will be on plastic female, which is metal male. So negative will be on metal male. Pretty sure I've got that right. Ah, oh, no, I've got that wrong, haven't I? Because positive is on plastic male. So my positive is on plastic female. Oh yeah, which is, so my positive will be on metal male. So my negative will be on metal female, which goes into plastic male which will meet with the plastic female coming down from the solar panel which is definitely negative. I think that's right. And I'm also pretty sure that um, I don't need to put the cap and the cap elements on it before I crimp this onto the wire because I'm pretty sure that this all fits through there. Yeah I think I can slide that on after I've crimped this. Maybe I'll just put it on anyway, just to be safe. So lolly stick offset piece in the crimp tool, locked closed. Tip that round this way. Wings slightly closed, ready to take this. Let's put the wire in. Have I remembered everything? I'm pretty sure I have. I don't want to have to do this again. Let's close that up. The lolly sticks come out, but I don't think it matters. Oh, I'm not sure that worked terribly well, but I'm committed now, so there it is. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a mess. It all got a bit squished, and I think I know why. I think it's because I closed those wings in too much, and it didn't follow properly the profile of the crimper, so that's a bit of a mess. I might just try and squish those flattened bits down a bit so it all fits in the housing. Oh well, let's see if I get on better with the uh, female side. So let's push this into the, this is female metal, male plastic. Let's push that into there. I've got my top ready and my bit of tube there. So I think that's everything. This is the sort of one shot click into place. That's proving difficult. So let's push it in with a screwdriver. That's clicked into place. That ain't never coming back out. Is it fully down to the bottom there? Yes, I think we can see it is. And let's close this up with my piece of tubing. For the male pin, I don't need my offsetting lolly stick. That's in there. I've got the wings going up into the guide. Uh, is everything on? Oh, I'll put that on afterwards. It'll be fine. Let's not worry about it. Poke that in the hole and crimp 
this is the bit where it needs maximum for, even that one hasn't crimped totally symmetrically no oh, that was a mess as well ah and on here i've got bits of sort of flashing where it all went up into the guide a little bit wrong but i can just bend those back on themselves with some pliers if i can get the things lined up properly yeah so it's not a major problem that will all fit in the housing but eh, it's just a shame it doesn't work properly now i've got to make sure this with all its bits and bobs fits over here pretty sure it will got the uh, gripper thing there got the rubber thing there got my tubing up on the sleeve so yeah that's all ready to go now i can do the one shot push into there i think again i'm gonna have to use the screwdriver because i i can't push on the wire because it will it'll suddenly buckle if i do that so i'll push it down there that's gone in yeah ready to uh, attach the uh, yellow side so the sequence is get the yellow or get this um, transparent tube as far down there as it'll go will it actually slide over the metal work no i don't think it will then get the mating piece of tubing to go in there then the gripper mechanism which is split it's just got a a split there get that to go over all of that lot and finally bring down the cap push it over the top and screw it closed and i'm gonna do that as tight as i can so there's no gap in there to try and get a perfect seal in there in any case these are both hanging upside down so water is going to tend to drip down these plugs and down that way Yes, it might suck up there by capillary action, but against gravity. Anyway, there should be a, a watertight seal inside there. And I think we're ready. MC4 is one end and uh, ring terminals the other. I think we can take it outside. But just before I do a quick final test on this lead acid battery, let's just wedge that in there. Uh, positive to positive. These can't short together because there's no exposed metal work. So we're just looking for two seconds on, there it is. And now battery voltage, which this says 12.9. So let's see what this says. One, two, lots of flashes, 12 point, some quite high number. So first things first, let's unscrew the M8 nuts. They're sitting under here. And on the negative side. Okay, trying to do this one handed. It's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, so that's, and you can see I've got my pos and neg the right way round. So let's put, it's going to fall down the back, isn't it? Let's put neg on there and attach it. Ah, now can I still put that over the top? Not easily. Maybe if I bend that down a bit. No, that won't bend down. Okay, uh, right, so now let's attach pause, but I really want to be able to see what I'm doing. So I want that sort of hung up on there. I might just get a nail, actually. So I've temporarily put a couple of hooks uh, up here to hold the two MC4s. That means my charge controller is just hanging there uh, against the fence in approximately the right direction. Okay, let's apply positive. There's the two seconds on. And now it should start flashing out voltage. Well, I need to put the uh, nut on here. Let's just see what the voltage is, actually. Oh, I missed it. We'll have a look again in a minute. Let's try and do this with a shadow. Oh, I think I might have been about five. So we're looking for two pulses for 12 volts. One, two. Yeah, I think it's 12.4, 12.5, which would be about right for these batteries. They are fully charged because uh, Jim gave them to me fully charged but they've been sat about six months doing nothing but yeah that's finally on now if i attach the solar panel finally i've got a working system let's do it well i've attached them but i couldn't film that it just wasn't possible to do it one-handed oh the sun's gone behind a cloud that's quite interesting okay let's check the voltage on here one two 
Oh, one, two, three, four again. Now I'm not expecting this thing to, because it's enormous, I'm not expecting it to suddenly rise up in voltage. It's going to take a while. Uh, so in a way that's a good sign that um, the solar charge controller hasn't suddenly shot up to 13 and a half volts. Oh, that might be about 12.6. Let's just check that again. One, two. Oh, that might be about 12.7. So yeah, this is rising up, um, but I think it'll be quite a while before it starts modulating. Now, I was just wondering whether if I take one of these caps off, we'd see any bubbling going on in there. So you can just make out the plates in there if I don't cast a shadow over them. Right, the sun's come out and I did see a bubble then, so I'm just hoping to see another one. There's never a bubble when you want one. Yeah, there are bubbles coming up here now. The sun's out, it's on the panel, yeah. You can see the disturbance in the surface of the water. How about this one? Not easy to film this. That one suddenly had a disturbance. Oh yeah, there we are. There are the bubbles coming up in the dilute sulfuric acid. So the battery's charging. Just saw a magnificent bubble in this one. But I just can't catch it on camera. Oh, some bubbles! I think I finally got one. Excellent. Do you know what? I think that's up to 13 point something. Let's check it again. One, two, three. About 13.3, I think. That's in danger of... Uh, I mean, these batteries were supplied fully charged. So it's just taking a little bit of current to get them back up to that. But yeah, that's in uh, danger of modulating, I think. Pretty soon. Wow, that sun's pretty strong on the back of my neck. Cut. Right, let's do a slow zoom back from the solar charge controller. The lighting level's going to change because I'm acting as a shadow at the moment. But there it is, hooked up to the battery. If I don't trip over anything. And hooked up to the solar panel cables. And I'm going to work out some sort of battening arrangement. I'm going to ruin this shot now. Uh, under here, that bottom shelf bracket, I can put a batten across and hang the cables from it so it looks a bit neater than this. But essentially, as long as I don't fall down a hole, that is it. The battery is being charged from the solar panel. Let's repeat that two more times and I've got my power wall. Cheerio.